In this demonstration, we'll have a look at configuring some of the more detailed options for your connections in MySQL. So having just done an install and initial configuration of the install, it brings you to MySQL Workbench. Now, if you did not happen to include the Workbench in your install, uh, the Workbench can also be downloaded separately if need be. And you can just get that from mysql.com forward slash downloads. But if you included that in your installation, it goes through and asks you to do an initial configuration, which will create for you this local instance connection right here. So when you bring up your Workbench for the first time, you will see this. So we can have a look at the configuration properties that have been set here, and we can make changes if necessary. If you just take your mouse and place it on the corner, you see the page flip animation that happens here. So we can just click on that corner, and this will give you the basic properties of this connection. So we can just go ahead and hit connect, or we can just click the icon itself to make the connection. But if we, if we need to change any properties, then we want to go to edit connection. So these are the same values that were placed in there when we did the initial configuration. But if absolutely any component within here needs to be changed, you certainly can do it at any particular time. Most notably, maybe the username and the password that was supplied, maybe the default schema to which you want to connect. Maybe it's a different host name or the IP address has changed or anything along those lines. So. I only have this one server to connect to, but just to give you an idea, instead of localhost, let's just put in the IP address that equates to localhost. And that's the only change that we need to make just to give you an idea. And if, if we want to, we can certainly rename this if we want to. Let's just call this local instance. Let's remove that. So anything else that needs to be changed you can you can go to your remote management see if there's any options in there that need to be changed and anything under system profile as to the location of the configuration file uh, the installation type and, and so on i mean anything within here can be changed with respect to the connection now if you want to make sure that these values are correct before you go ahead and save these then we can hit the test connection option here and we just have to supply the password which we can also store in the connection here as well, as long as we enable the option to save the password in the vault. You can see that's actually here in the background right there to store in vault. And if it is in the vault, then you can clear it as well. So we'll just enable the option to save it in the vault. Hit OK. And since everything was correct, then that is OK. So now we can close this and we have our connection now called just local instance and you can see that the property has been changed from local host to 127.0.0.1 and again with the default port and of course we could have changed that as well now if you have a number of servers to which you connect and the credentials are, are fairly consistent across those connections then another option that we can do is to duplicate this connection rather than having to hit the plus sign here to manually create another one. So you certainly can go this way. I can click on plus sign and I can go ahead and start creating a new connection, but I, I would have to manually enter all of these values. So instead of doing that, I can just save myself some time. Perhaps it's just an IP address that's different, or maybe it's just the username. So what I can do is actually duplicate this connection here. So it makes it much quicker and easier to have multiple connections. So again, I'm just gonna go to my page flip. I'm gonna click here and choose edit connection and what I can do is down at the bottom here you see that there is a duplicate option so all I have to do is click duplicate this will default to give it the same name with a one on the end so let's just call this um, server 2 just as an example and in that case let's again since I don't have an actual server let's just change this back to localhost and instead of the username of root, I'll use the one I created for myself. So again, most of the settings are the same. So I can go ahead and test the connection. It should prompt me for my password. And I'll store that in the vault as well. Click on OK. And then that one works as well. So now when I click OK here and then close this, I'll see that I have the second connection now that is essentially identical to the first one, but of course with those 
just ever so slightly change values. So I can launch this by just clicking on it. And since I already was prompted for my password and I told it to store it in the vault, I go straight in. So and that will remain there until I clear that from from the vault. So again, let's just click on our tab here edit the connection and if I maybe maybe I've changed my password then what I can do of course is to just clear that close this click on it again and now I should be prompted for my password and there we go so let's just assume that we have made a change to the password and then we can restore that in the vault click on OK and then we go so again if you have multiple servers with quite similar properties in terms of their connection, then it's very quick, very easy to create those additional connections with more or less the same settings as the original ones.